All right. Um, who's, who's ready for some uh, after conference refreshments? <laughs> and, sorry, you can't leave yet. You have to listen to us. Guards, close the doors. Um, so um, I'm Toby. This is Martijn. Um, we, um, between Telenav and OSMUS, we've uh, started a camera lending program to collect uh, street level imagery. And um, we're presenting about uh, the first few months of that program here. Uh, we're kind of going to um, bounce back and forth between the two of us. And, um, yeah, so we're going to start out. Uh, Martin's going to just talk about OpenStreetCam a little bit um, and introduce the, uh, the camera itself. And then I'm going to talk about the, the lending program, how it works, um, and some, some results we've seen. And we have at least one actual user to. to Give us a testimonial. And uh, yeah, talk. What's next? Um, it's kind of surprising how many. I know I've caught a Google Street View car as well. This is an Apple, Apple car that someone caught. I wonder how common that is. Yeah, raise your hand if you've, if you've caught any other Street View vehicles on your mapping scene. Oh, wow. <laughs> Google just came by my house. All right, so. All right, there you go. Hi. Um, I'm Martijn from Telnav, and um, we teamed up with OSM US to create this program. Um, so all the imagery goes to OpenStreetCam, so that's why I thought maybe we'd talk a little bit about OpenStreetCam, uh, which was launched two years ago at State of the Map Seattle, which is a little bit more than two years ago because it was in the summer. Um, we started from zero images then, and we have a little over 170 million images now, all contributed by the likes of you, so that's great. Um, we did it all with uh, with um, uh, phone cameras, with um, uh, cell phone cameras at first, and uh, s uh, since since about a year, we have also have the the cameras that we're talking about today that I'll go in, I'll introduce in a little bit. Um, Open Street Cam was designed 100% for uh, for mappers and with drivers in mind as well. So it's uh, it's really uh, it's really ca trying to capture everything that matters for uh, for 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 getting from A to B on the road. Um, by people who get from A to B on the road, so kind of a good match. Um, all the images are freely available under an uh, open license, also outside of OSM, so if you want to use the images, then that's, uh, that's fine. Um, a lot of the stuff that is the OpenStreetCam platform is open source. Uh, this includes the iOS and Android apps, but also the, uh, the, 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 a lot of the image detection stuff that I'll go into a little bit um, before, before we go into the actual program. Um, so yeah, here you can see you know, a little bit of the, the, the growth chart um, in, um, in, uh, in kilometers. We've covered about 4.5 million. Um, that's in miles. I don't know. I'm European. Let's see. About 3,000 miles. <laughs> a little under 3,000 miles uh, of, of road coverage. The blue line is the unique roads. So that's an interesting um, kind of metric, right? We, have, we cover a lot more than just unique roads because um, multiple coverage helps with um, helps with accurate uh, detections of the street signs. The more times you you cover the same the same road and the same sign, the more accurate and the more confidence you can have in the in the detections of all the features that we're that we're adding to that. Um, so uh, OpenStreetCam integrates with uh, with the OSM editing tools through um, uh, through through the OpenStreetCam API. You see the in blue the swath of OpenStreetCam images um, overlaid on the OSM and the aerial imagery map that makes it easy for uh, for mappers to use the images to visually compare it to uh, whatever they they see on the aerial and whatever they know from from having been there in person, so that's um, that's kind of the rich integration that that street level imagery offers for uh, for mappers. And then again, the sign detection that's something that OpenStreetCam has been focusing on mostly f um, to as the second stage of the platform, if you will, and that's where this this camera that I, that I'll talk about uh, really comes into play um, because it's been optimized to do this specifically very well. Um, as you go through OpenStreetCam images, it will it will show you the, it will show you the, all the different uh, detections we have more than over over 90, 90 uh, sign classes in the U.S. already and working on more. Um, the code that that um, that supports this is is open source, and we also have a very large training set that is also open. So anyone who wants to help expand this can do so. Um, and this the, and the camera program and the camera that we that we work with is specifically designed to kind of do this very well. 
Um, my colleague Adrian is doing a talk about that goes into much more depth around this uh, tomorrow morning, so you should go see that as well tomorrow at 10. Right, Adrian? Tomorrow at 10. Um, before I give it back to uh, Toby, a little bit about the camera itself. So this is what it looks like. You can see it at the Telnet booth as well. Um, it's a modified version of the standard uh, Wayland's Horizon camera that you can just buy um, on the internet, maybe even in an actual brick and mortar store. I don't know if they do that anymore. Um, higher, higher quality optics for especially star sharp still images um, and specifically d d designed with um, with, with reliable um, machine learning based detections in mind. So we had to, exp we had to basically replace the optics which were optimized for, for streaming video, for, video f for full motion video recording with a different optics that, that optimized for this specific use case. So the hardware is different from what you would see in a retail version. Um, and the firmware is also, um, is also um, um, customized to include uh, like a still image recording mode and and uh, and linking with OpenStreetCam accounts so you can upload right from the camera. Um, so the main benefits of versus using a phone is uh, like this, this 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 device does not it does get very hot but it doesn't overheat. Uh, the phone remains free for anything you want to use it for. Um, these are all actual images by the way that that some of our beta some of our program users uh, sent in as their favorites. Um, the, it's, it has a little bit of a wider field of view than, a mo than, a, than most phones will provide. Um, uh, sharper images under poor conditions, and, and Toby will show some of those. Um, it requires almost no effort to record after the initial setup. You can just leave it set and forget it, and also Toby will talk a little bit about that. And it's a pretty small form factor, so it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't block the windshield as much. So I think that's a, yeah, that's a pretty compelling package to use a dedicated camera versus a phone. Phones we still very much support as well, but this camera program has been, um, has, been, uh, has been very effective in kind of getting people to record more and more effortlessly. Hmm? Yeah, give it back to Toby. Yeah, so um, I've, uh, I've been collecting imagery for uh, OpenStreetCam and, and Mapillary, both using a GoPro camera for years. And so when I got this camera, I thought I'd do a comparison run with the GoPro sitting right next to the, the Way lens. And uh, one thing I notice is in low light conditions, it seems to excel more than the GoPro. I know there's, you know, the ProTune settings in the GoPro that I could probably tinker with, but that screen kind of scares me. Uh, all kinds of settings. And, um, so the, the picture on the left is actually higher resolution than the one on the right. Um, it has like twice the pixels, but it, because of motion blur, it's uh, kind of useless. And here you can see all the all the um, cars have their headlights turned on, so it's pretty late in the evening, but you can still make out the, well, I don't know if you can on the projector, but uh, the street name and the, uh, you know, yield, uh, yield on left turn or blinking, whatever that is, blinking yellow arrow. Um, so you can still collect fairly useful information even late into the evening. So the lending program uh, started back in, was it uh, April, I think. Um, and uh, Martin approached me and asked if I could just act as kind of the uh, logistics hub for it. Um, so OSM US supplies uh, the SD cards and uh, pays for, for shipping, and obviously Telenav supplies cameras. Um, yeah, we have uh, just about 20 cameras out in the field right now. I have. Um, Another box sitting at home, waiting, waiting for. Uh, actually, we have a backlog. I need to contact people. Uh, if you've filled out the form and haven't heard from me, come see me after the meeting. Um, so the rules are: you, uh, we, we want you to be a OSM US member. We want you to be invested in the in the OpenStreetMap community, and we want you to be an active mapper. Uh, we want this. You know, we're not just trying to give away fancy cameras. We want to improve the map uh, and help help people do that. Um, Standard uh, term is three months. You can um, keep it for three months. And uh, if you hit the million point mark, uh, you can keep the camera if you want. Um, or if you've driven all the roads that are around you, you can still send it back and give it to someone else. Um, and yeah, it, it is um, only useful in a car, basically. The, the GPS functionality is actually in the mount, not in the camera itself. Um, 
So it's specifically designed for, for windshield. Um, and yeah, we have um, the uh, a channel in the OSM US Slack organization, uh, specifically dedicated to Waylands, where people can ask questions or um, come, come there with problems. Uh, some of the Telenav peop people are in there and uh, generally respond pretty quickly to issues. Um, so yeah, it's just a, a Google form and spreadsheet that we use for tracking. And here you can see one of my uh, first batches of six cameras sitting in, in the front seat of my car. Uh, the camera boxes are perfect size to fit in the uh, flat rate boxes from the Postal Service. That's handy. So this is what you get. Um, the wedge thing there is the camera. Uh, the lower left is the windshield mount. Uh, it also comes with a OBD2 dongle. It's in the upper left there, the square thing. Uh, the camera can, can connect to your engine control unit in your car and read some uh, speed data and it helps improve the GPS accuracy. Um, and there's a remote control so you can push a button on your steering wheel and it'll uh, start or stop the camera. Although it generally does that on its own. Um, when you come to stoplight, it pauses. When you start driving again, it automatically starts back up. So the uh, setup is fairly simple. You connect uh, connect the camera to Wi-Fi using the, uh, anybody remember T9? Uh, <laughs> before cell phones were, were smart. Um, it's basically the interface here for putting in text to uh, connect to a Wi-Fi network. Um, yes, my Wi-Fi network is named 1701-D. Any Star Trek? No, nothing. Anyway, um, so once you connect the camera to Wi-Fi, the Waylands app will let you log into your, your OpenStreetCam account, um, which you can use your, your OSM credentials for as well. Um, and then, yeah, once, once it's set up, you just stick it in the car and basically forget about it. Uh, if, if your garage has Wi-Fi coverage, you can pretty much just leave it in the car. When you get back, it'll start uploading as soon as it gets back in range of, of uh, the Wi-Fi network. Otherwise, you can take it out of the car and, and uh, it has a charging mount. You can let it upload in your house. So here are uh, the current, the, the map there is the, uh, our current users where I've sent cameras. Uh, we have a little bit of a cluster on the East Coast um, and kind of barren in the Midwest. Um, there's someone who submitted an application in Minnesota, I think, so I should probably definitely get them a camera. Fill in some gaps. Um, and yeah, we've got, uh, we had to estimate a little bit on the number of Im images for technical reasons, but somewhere in the ballpark of seven and a half million images uploaded so far. Um, yeah, 28,000 miles. Uh, being so close to Canada, I thought I should include kilometers. I mean, they're better anyway, but. Um, yeah, and the OpenStreetCam points, you get more points for driving on roads that don't have coverage yet. You get 10 points per picture for that. Um, or one point if there's already been 10 people on the road or more. So, um, yeah. Are you gonna can, get you up here? I can, get, I can get these rally people up here. Uh, so there's a few people in the room here that have used the camera. Um, I know Miriam has, I know Wade there has, I know Jim has. Um, so I asked, I, um, I asked people on Slack also, like, what do you like and what do you dislike about the camera? So I thought, well, why not get some people on stage? Uh, <laughs> um, Jim, what did you think? Are you going to come up and, and say a few words about what you liked, disliked about the camera and how to use it and versus maybe other um, things that you've tried? Hello. Awesome. All right. My name is Jim, and I'm a Wacam camera user. <laughs> um, uh, my favorite thing about the camera is that you, I leave it plugged into my car at all, all the time. Not plugged in, but I leave the thing up there, the apparatus for it. And I just, ah, and I just plug it into that, and I'm able to just drive anywhere and record it. When I stop, it stops, and I don't have to think about it. At the end of the trip, I take it down, plug it in, 
and it uploads everything. Uh, what I don't like about it is that you have to use it with that specific mount. As uh, Toby said earlier, it has the GPS in it, so if you wanted to take it off and there's like another mount, that'd be cool to put in a different car, but I can't do that. Or I really wanted to try it on my bicycle, but that's also <laughs> not something it's good for. Um, but it's really seamless, and I don't have to think about it. I do wish I could download stuff off of it for, for myself, like in video form. It takes a, a picture every one second, which is not the best for video. But I think otherwise, it's, it's pretty good to use. I think so. Alan? I'm Alan Bragg. I, I got one of the first cameras. And uh, what I like about it is, I, well, I like to contribute to Mapillary and uh, Open street cam and everything, but what I like about it is it gets me to go places I would never go otherwise. We took a trip last winter in the South, and we went along the Panhandle in Florida, and we went to all these nice towns. But then I'd have an evening friend. I'd go and I'd drive on the back roads, and I saw what this country is like that I never saw before. You, I don't know if you haven't been there. There's a lot of poor people that live in Florida, and probably a lot of other places, and really bad conditions. And you really feel sorry for them when you get there. You can't imagine how they can live. So I enjoyed that. And in my own town, I realized I'd lived there 50 years since I got married in Bedford, Massachusetts. And there are probably 20% of the roads in the town I'd never been on. I had no reason to ever go down these roads. And I learned a lot, just what, what it looks like down there. And it was just really interesting. Thanks, Alan. Miriam, do you have anything to add? Is there... um, <laughs> You've been using it quite a bit also. Yeah. So uh, what I like about the camera is that you forget about it. I mean, you just, if you have it there, like clip on the thing, you just forget it, start driving, and you get all this data. What I don't like is also that I want to use it sometimes, I mean, with different vehicles, and you have to get the thing, uh, because the GPS chip is in the mount, it's not in the camera itself. So that's something I don't like. And uh, let's see, and also I don't like that I cannot edit it in the camera itself. Yeah, I would like to add uh, yeah, I went to like certain areas that maybe I, don't, I think was blurry or something, and you cannot edit it in the camera. Yeah, mainly. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been learning a lot of stuff about the camera from from the users. Um, so thanks for everyone for sharing your experiences now and also during the program. It was really really useful. Um, we keep improving with like firmware updates and stuff to keep improving the, the camera from the telenav side. Um, so quickly on what's next, um, and then we're going to close close it close this out. Um, we're looking still to expand the program. We have 20 cameras now. We may expand it still. Um, Toby is kind of um, is 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 one one person, capable of a lot, but um, but also uh, capable of only so many things um, uh, besides his full time job. So we might need some more people to help um, run it. Um, we're starting a program in Canada also. Five cameras are going uh, that way. Um, <laughs> I've lost my orientation after spending all day indoors that, that way. Yes. <laughs> um, they're, they're, going, um, they're going to Canada, uh, and, and people in Canada on the Canadian mailing list will hear from, hear from John soon um, on how to get their hands on one. Will it be similar to what we're doing? Uh, John is right there. Yeah. Um, and we already have a few cameras in different places as well. We have a camera in uh, OSM UK that people can borrow for shorter periods. They also they already had a 360 camera that they borrowed, that they lent for on to members as well. Um, we have some cameras in uh, Japan, Germany that their people are thinking about also st starting something similar with. Um, we're looking at uh, starting a pilot with Hot, um, um, start getting some cameras to to uh, to, uh, to different parts in the world. Um, so to get just more cameras and more people um, enjoying kind of con contributing in this pretty easy way, I think most, pe most people agree that it's a pretty easy way to contribute to OpenStreetCam and also to OpenStreetMap in that way. And if you want to get your hands on one, if you're an awesome US member, of course you can sign up. Um, that's where we get to the last uh, FAQ side of things. Um, you can sign up to the lending program um, website. Um, through the website, uh, through the link above. It's on the OpenStreetMap US blog, so if you just go to their website, you can sign up there. There's also, um, from the Telenav side, we're giving a few of them away through a raffle, and if you don't have a ticket yet, there will be, there's a few folks here that hold tickets, and we're gonna do it right after this talk, so if you don't have a ticket yet, get it now, so we can give you a camera, so we can give you a camera if you have the right number. 
Um, those are not the same tickets as you, as you hold to get your t-shirt, even though they look the same, <laughs> to make it extra confusing. Um, yeah, so, so we hope to get one, one of those cameras in your hands in, in whatever way we can. Um, we really enjoy working with them and working with you to collect more images for OSM. So that's, that's, been, that's, been, that's been a real joy to, to do with, uh, with, uh, with OSM US. And uh, we want to thank you for all your contributions to OSM and uh, for having fun contributing imagery as well. And um, yeah, be out there and map, map the world. All right, thank you very much, guys. Any questions? Any questions? Yeah, any questions? Clifford. Um, one of the areas I think is concerned about, because I've been doing some uh, recording in my area, is I'm doing it manually, so I can avoid uploading images from around my house. With this being all automatic, is your way of fencing, do a geofence around? Right, the question is around geofencing and how, how you can avoid kind of um, um, capturing certain areas that you visit a lot, perhaps your home. Um, so there's, there's, there's um, with this camera being always on, that's, that's a concern that I've heard a few times. And there's, there's, there's not a super straightforward way around that other than just kind of manually. Uh, the, the camera has a touch screen, so you can, you, can, you can fairly easily kind of turn it off while recording. There is this button also that kind of we stopped supporting because it gives a lot of trouble with the time synchronization. Um, it, has, it has yielded a lot of uh, false tracks, uh, but you can still use this touch screen to fairly easily manually stop and start the recording. That's the, that's the best way right now that we offer to, um, uh, in terms of privacy control. Um, we don't really have a, like an elaborate geofencing system uh, yet that I've heard a few requests for um, that we're taking seriously, but right now this is the, the, the most straightforward way is just to manually kind of pause the recording. Um, but it's a, good, yeah, it's a good point and a good question, good, and a valid concern. What was the question? Can you use it in waterways at all? In waterways. Oh. Put it in a boat? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I, I, I haven't tried it. Um, I don't own a boat. Um, yeah. I mean, uh, like I said, it, um, it does need kind of a windshield to stick to. Um, and power. And yeah, micro USB power. Yeah. But sure. Yeah, maybe <laughs> if someone can lend me their yacht, then I'll, <laughs> I'll do some beta testing. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm wondering if is it possible if you have a lot of data, let's say you're, if you're recording for a full day in an area, is it possible to maybe uh, update the firmware to where it does uh, segmented uploads instead of trying to upload everything all at once? Hmm. Yeah, so the question is, uh, can we can uploads be split um, so that, like, if the upload fails, you don't have to redo, um, you know, f f 10 gigabytes or whatever? Um, I, 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 you can speak to the firmware, I guess, but uh, you can just stop and start the camera again um, to create a new sequence manually. That's the workaround, I guess. And also, I think... But here I'm going out of my depth a little bit, but I think it will pick up where it where it where it left off if your if your upload gets interrupted. Um, it doesn't start all the way from from the beginning again. Um, so so there is um, we've made some improvements in that as well. That it doesn't it doesn't it's a little bit more lenient because a lot of people have um, kind of intermittent Wi-Fi, especially if you park your car at home and you're kind of right inside Wi-Fi range or right outside, and it, it gets a little tricky. Um, the, we should have made, I mean, to my personal anecdotal experience, we have made improvements there. Um, but yeah. yeah, yeah. How many? 90, 90 gigabytes. Mm. 200. Okay. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 No, that gets. Yeah, that gets. That gets annoying. Sure. Yeah. At that. At that level. At that level, it's probably. 
easier to kind of start shipping SD cards back and forth. <laughs> I think you talked about it. Cinema, a Wi-Fi uh, extender. Yeah. <laughs> Another, one more question? Yeah. Yeah, so you need, uh, maybe you can take this. Um, well, you need an OpenStreetCam account, which you can use your OpenStreetMap account to authenticate uh, against OpenStreetCam. The reason why I asked is because it came up in the conversation we talked earlier. So does this mean you can get truckers to start I think the barrier to, to, to creating an OpenStreetMap account um, is, is, is not that big of a barrier, but I think... Well, I, I don't, you don't have to have an OpenStreetMap account, right? You can authenticate with... Don't you have Facebook or something as well? I don't remember. Yes. Yeah, there's, um, other, there's other social, auth social authentication options as well. Yeah. It shouldn't be very hard to you know, start contributing as... as That number recently, I can't remember now. <laughs> it's um, the, that guy right there has probably personally covered a fair, a, a pretty, pretty good percentage of it. <laughs> um, but uh, I don't know. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's between 25 and 50 percent, but it might be more. I'm, 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 I'm. I'm yeah, there's. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely. If you want a, if you want a nice recreational drive to capture uh, blank roads, there's definitely option opportunities for you. <laughs> yeah, um, not for much longer, perhaps. But <laughs> yeah, uh, is Jay here, by the way? No. Okay. Hmm? Jay, I have a camera for him. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he filled out the form and he said he was going to be at, okay. at the conference. So anyway. Well, so we we don't so they're not they're not on sale. This particular version is not uh, is not f for sale. It's like we distribute them through this program and and uh, through giveaways like here like we do here on the on the they're they're not for retail. So you can buy the retail version, but it won't do you any good for uh, for OpenStreetCam because it like I said it's modified in both in hardware and software. So. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm I'm not selling them. <laughs> I'd rather buy something like that than go out and do some other solution that doesn't really work like right. yeah. Mm -hmm. work yeah. with the foundation or whatever. No. Yeah. Well if you be if you become a Well, we're not we're not we're not set up we're not set up to do that really. Um, I mean, there's there's no real fundamental reason why not, but it's just not it's not something we kind of we we were set up to do. Um, it's 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 a question that I've gotten a couple a few times. Um, it's something to consider for sure. <laughs> if we can find a, if if we can find a channel and a ways, we, we might consider it. Um, All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, social tonight at what is it? Uh, social at six thirty, I think. Hopcat. 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 Yeah. Hopcat. Hope to see you there. So yeah.